We just went to San Francisco for your very first time. Mm -hmm. San Francisco is really the pinnacle of the tiki experience. Yeah. Stay tuned to find out which San Francisco tiki bar we thought was the best overall. Aloha folks, welcome back to Spike's Breezeway Cocktail Hour. We are here with my girlfriend Larissa. We just took a trip to San Francisco where I showed her some of my favorite tiki bars and we enjoyed some tiki bars together that I have never been to before. Mm -hmm. So what did you think of San Francisco? I thought it was amazing and I wish we had more time there because it was kind of a quick trip. So what we're gonna do tonight, first of all, cheers and cheers to all of you out there and YouTube land. We are both drinking Breezeways. She's drinking a Breezeway out of a rum barrel from Smuggler's Cove with a Trader Vic's Parrot in it. I'm drinking a Breezeway Cocktail Hour cocktail out of a Tongaroo mug with a little, uh, where did this guy come from? Smuggler's Cove. Oh, Smuggler's Cove, that's mm -hmm. right. Cheers. Cheers. And I, oh man. It's so good. That has to be my top three favorite tiki cocktails. Top three. It was the first one, I don't know. We'll put the recipe right here so you guys can drink along with us. There's, no, right over here. There are uh, several ingredients to this cocktail, so it might be tough to catch up to the show right now and make the drink, but you can refer back to it and enjoy one of these. It's worth it. It is worth it. <laughs> so the reason I'm drinking out of this little dude is because I've never had a cocktail out of this mug before in my life. Really? You've had a mug and you never drank out of it? Yeah. We've got lots of mugs I've been drinking out. Mm -hmm. This is from the Tonga Room from the 1950s or 1960s probably, and it emulates, what does that emulate? There are torches inside the Tonga Room, and it looks just like the torches. So before we get into all that, what do we think are the top three based on cocktails, mm -hmm. decor, mm -hmm. and say overall ambiance? Best experience. Best experience. Okay. Okay. So where did we go? First we went to the Tonga Room, which was located at our hotel, the yeah. Fairmont. Probably the most luxurious hotel I've ever stayed in. Yeah. <laughs> it's very nice. It's amazing. It's up on Knob Hill, it's this beautiful location. It's it really is, special. It is a quintessential vintage San Francisco experience. Mm -hmm. And I wanted to especially take her there because I knew so the Tonga Room is in the basement. And then after that, where do we go? We also met a Breezeway fan of the Tonga Room. Oh, that's right, yeah. <laughs> we were just leaving or just getting there and the guy went, it's Pike. Yeah. Excited to see you. Yeah, if you're out there watching, thanks Cheers. for saying hi. And then after the Tonga Room, we went to Pink and Idol. And then after that? After that, it was Zombie Village. Right. I'm, ha I'm having a hard time remembering names because mm -hmm. <laughs> there's Pig and Idol, there's False Idol. False there's, Idol. <laughs> yeah, as I know. They, all of the names start sounding very uh -huh. similar. And then the next day, we started off at Trader Vicks. Right, in Emeryville. Uh huh. And, and then we went to the Smurfler's Cove. And then that was it, right? Yeah, so that was five tiki bar slash restaurants in two nights. There was a bonus stop, though, in Chinatown. <laughs> Big trouble in Little China. What was the name of that place? Um, Lipo. Lipo. Lipo Lounge. Home of the Chinese Mai Tai. And you're gonna have to tune in on the Cooler Girls on Instagram to check out yeah. what we thought about that. That's right. So let's start with the Tonga Room. I was very excited to show you the Tonga Room because mm -hmm. the Tonga Room was my first tiki experience once I realized that tiki was a thing, mm -hmm. like in college. Before that, I had gone to all these different tiki bars with, or tiki restaurants with my parents, but not really understanding what it was. I went to the Royal Hawaiian in Laguna Beach when I was super young. All I knew was that it was really dark. And I was like, this is weird. Mm -hmm. Turns out I really like really dark. And really weird. So what did you think about the Tonga Room? I think the Tonga Room is probably one of the most impressive and immersive and most unique places that I've ever been to. And when we got there, it was actually raining like the, the minute that we got there. So yeah. that was also. So if you aren't aware, every 15 minutes it does rain and there's a thunderstorm. Mm -hmm. And they really did that before anybody else. Apparently they say Don the Beachcomber did that first, but the first time I ever saw something like that was at the Tonga Room. In the middle of the whole big thing, it was a big swimming pool. And like in the 1920s or 30s, I believe, that pool was like the aquatic center for the hotel. So you'd go there and swim and do laps and stuff. It's eight feet deep. But then in like the 1940s, 1950s, I think they transformed the place into a cruise ship theme mm -hmm. where you could have dinner in there. Mm -hmm. And then after that, it became like an Asian restaurant, like an oriental experience. And there was like a, a raft that kind of floated out and there was a band that played. Uh, and then shortly thereafter, probably in the early 1960s, it became the Tonga Room where it turned full tiki. 
and then the boat turned into like this floating kind of hut thing. They had bands out there playing like steel guitar and ukuleles and probably exotica music. So can you imagine dining in a place where it rains and thunderstorms happen every 15 minutes or so? Yes, I can. <laughs> But it was those kinds of experiences that informed places like Trader Sam's and Disneyland and mm -hmm. uh, Pagan Idol even and all kinds of all kinds of places that do that shtick. So before it was the Tonga Room, Don the Beachcomber did it, but then the Tonga Room picked it up and they've been doing it for years since. So let's talk about the dining experience. Uh huh. So I had a seafood dish that was incredible. I uh -huh. had nothing bad to say about that. It was. Pretty good. I had a shockingly expensive steak. <laughs> it was delicious, shockingly expensive. Mm -hmm. uh, let's talk about the cocktails. What did you order? <laughs> what did I order? I don't know. She always ends up with like some something that sounds fun. I ordered a Jungle Bird that was undrinkable. I forgot what I had, and that's already a bad sign. That but it was. It was, it was not good. And then we decided that we had to try the 1944 Mai Tai because it said the 1944 Mai Tai, which means a very specific thing. And like, it wasn't that. No, it tasted like synthetic lime juice yeah. and then the proportions were all over the place. And I am the biggest fan of the Tonga Room. And it's so important to support these places. Tell me about the music while we were dining. We dined kind of late. The music was the kind of thing that would make me walk out of a restaurant if it wasn't like a place that I really wanted to be in. Yeah. So to put everything in context, right, when we walked in, it was like we walked into Leroy Schmaltz and Bob Van Oosting's mm -hmm. dream build. It looks amazing, it looks perfect. It is an Oceanic Arts masterpiece build. And the mm -hmm. fact that it still survives is incredible. The fact mm -hmm. that it is one of the giant tiki palaces that is way too big for its own good mm -hmm. and still survives is absolutely worthy of anybody's visit. And it was packed. Super packed. So many people in there. So our advice for you would be go early. Before the band starts playing. Go for happy hour. Try one of the cocktails. Mm -hmm. And then have beer. <laughs> and like we really wanted to like the cocktails. I was like, yeah, this isn't horrible, you know, it's just whatever. So, last time I was there was like a couple of years maybe before COVID and Martin Kate had just come in and consulted, I think, for the Tonga Room. And for a while, the drinks were pretty good. Like, mm -hmm. they were doing a good job. And then I think the lockdown happened and then I think they all forgot their training. And they slid back into 1970s cocktails. Yeah, but we could tell there was also bad ingredients. Just yeah, the limes. Pre-made juices and the lime taste is synthetic. And yeah. If you want to avoid the bad music and you want to avoid a, I think the bill was $200 for three cocktails and two meals. So it was a lot. It was a lot, yeah. If you want to avoid that, go during happy hour. Yeah. Get yourself some appetizers. It, it's worth going just for the place. And the service absolutely. was also incredible. Everybody would treat it as like really nice. Yeah, so. the wait staff was incredible. There yeah. was a hostess there who recognized us and was the sweetest, mm -hmm. best thing about the whole place. Mm -hmm. And we really do appreciate her. She gave us an incredible table right next to the water. Uh huh, yeah. No trip to San Francisco would be complete without going to the Tongue Yeah, I'm glad. I'm really glad that we went there. Yeah. Even though drinks were <laughs> undrinkable. Well, okay, so my drink was okay. It wasn't like the worst drink that I've ever had in my life, but yours was actually really bad. <laughs> well, when you start messing up Campari, yeah. Things can go bad very quickly. Mm -hmm. Campari is a delicate thing. It's like mm -hmm. it's like that piece of the puffer fish that you eat that if you don't <laughs> cut it die. right, yeah, you'll die. <laughs> It's the same thing with Campari. If you mix up that wrong, uh -huh. you'll die. Yeah. Tell me about the decor. It was perfect. It was incredible. Every little corner that you looked was amazing. The idea is we are aboard the SS Tonga. Mm -hmm. So there's all kinds of really thick ship masts and rigging. After seeing the Oceanic Arts auctions, seeing all of Leroy's art up on the walls in context was like very moving. Mm -hmm. Don't say it. <laughs>
Yeah, I, I could see you getting like little teary eyes when <laughs> you got there. I just, I just love it when everything is perfect. And it was yeah. so close to being perfect, but the music is like disco. The live band was phenomenal, musicianship-wise. Uh -huh. Phenomenal. But they were but, kind of like a wedding band, you know? But the that, music that they were playing yeah. was a nightmare. Mm -hmm. It was very disco, very, she even called out Spice Girls once. Uh -huh. And like, I just don't know why a place like that can't have, you know, surf music or Hawaiian music or I... And we were discussing about it. I think if they were playing surf music, everybody would be as happy as they were, you know? Yeah. Everybody would be dancing and enjoying it. So it's not, it's just a matter of attention to details and... And taste. Yeah. There were all kinds of nautical details. The theming is on par with that of like an amusement park, like it, fake walls that go nowhere and fake windows that look out to nothing. But it is a truly transportative place. I think that anybody should go there. Okay, so once we paid that enormous bill. Or you did. Thank you. Where did we go after that? We went to Pagan Idol. Pagan Idol. Mm -hmm. Pagan Idol lives in the space that the second Tiki Bobs did. And people didn't realize that until several years of them inhabiting the space. When they lined up, there's like a drain spout on the outside that matches. And the only reason there was a photo of that was because there was a murder in that building. Yeah. Who did it? Some dude. Who died? Some chick, mm. maybe. I don't know. I don't really remember the story. Mm. What's up with this bird? <laughs> what did you think about Pagan Idol? It was really fun. I loved the decor. They had all of those light effects that um, mimic water. That was incredible. I love that. Yeah, I love the place. There was a moment where some like noise happens. Mm -hmm, some smoke. The decor was really, really amazing. They have like an aquarium with fish, mm -hmm. just like real fish. The idea behind Pagan Idol is that you enter in through an upturned ship. Mm -hmm. The ceiling of the place is kind of like arched like this, like the hull of a boat. And they have port hose, they can see fish. fish. and stuff, yeah. yeah. Chandeliers with um, octopus tentacles That's and right. all of that. And then as you go up the stairs, mm -hmm. the stairs are kind of backlit and stuff, and then you enter into like this, it seems kind of like a beach maybe, like a beachy hut kind of thing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Some giant tiki's carved by Crazy Al, as fish well as- Fish floats, all yeah. Very cool space. Yeah, I loved it. Do you remember what we had there? I had a mango tango, I remember that. Mango tango. Uh, do you remember what I had? Mm, nope. I think I had a cocktail from them, like one of their signature cocktails. I liked yours better than mine. Yeah, it was very like spicy, mm -hmm. kind of all spice and incredible cocktails. Mm -hmm. It was a nice palate cleanser mm -hmm. from the drinks of the Tonga room. Yeah, and the bartenders all really seemed like they really knew what they were doing, yeah. so. I think Pagan Idol, decor wise, the music was perfect. Oh yeah, I it remember, the music was good. Yeah, it wasn't a very crowded night, which no. was nice. I've been in there one time before where it was like, like shoulder to shoulder, so like mm -hmm. super packed, which makes it kind of less of an experience because you're kind of fighting to get your next drink and mm -hmm. it's, yeah, it was it was very nice. I had three cocktails there. I had one cocktail. The only reason why I didn't have any other is because I knew that we were going to other places, so I didn't want to get wasted. But they were good enough that I wanted more. But the bartender Christian recognized us when we came uh -huh, in. Yeah. And so we ended up tasting some rums with him. And <laughs> then, did. yeah. Uh, I was like, uh, I don't know if I can taste rum like that. And then he made me a, was it a Queens Park swizzle or something? He made me some kind of swizzle. It was very good. So yeah, good spot. Mm -hmm. After that, we went to the Tenderloin, which is probably one of the worst. What? Which is probably one of the worst. Tenderloin? Yes. Which is probably one of the worst areas of San Francisco right now. <laughs> it's like a Selma Village. Tenderloin. Yeah, it's in the Tenderloin. Sorry. So what was the name of that bar? Zombie Village. Right. That was really fun. The decor in Zombie Village is striking, right? Mm hmm Yeah, they also had that kind of water lightning effect mm -hmm. that makes you feel like you're underwater. There's kind of a big main bar that runs through the whole uh -huh. center of the bar. Also, I really loved the music because it was very surf music, but like really rock surf music, you know? It was definitely more of kind of a punk rock tiki bar. Uh -huh. but Which not, makes me very happy. I know, we were, and we were both like in the mood for that after what we, you know, the whole night. They have this whole cave system where you can like sit in these caves. And then along the back wall are all these like tiny little huts. That was my favorite thing. I know. So I we, hate I hate when you're at a bar and you can't have conversations because the music's yeah. too loud or people are being too obnoxious or whatever. 
So we love that we have our own private little spot. It was another case of it not being very busy. So we lucked out and got our yeah. own hut, which was built by our but friend it, Bamboo Ben yeah, and his it, son. But I think all of the little huts were busy. So it wasn't, it wasn't empty. It was just mm -hmm. like the perfect amount of people there. But the idea from the huts, I guess, as per Bamboo Ben, was that each one was supposed to be themed a legendary tiki bar. Oh, wow. That's why we had a menu of Down the Beach Comer in ours. Oh, you didn't tell me that. That's, that's really interesting. found that out today. <laughs> yeah. But he said that the owners didn't go as deep as they could have mm -hmm. with the theming, so yeah. they kind of like stopped. I think a lot of these tiki bar owners like spend a fortune on everything and then go, okay, I think, That's we're, I think we're done, uh -huh. yeah. But the bartender was incredible, like super friendly, super amiable, and mm -hmm. um, I think I got a zombie. That zombie was probably the best zombie I've ever had. There was a name for it though. Was it like an, something rum zombie or a... It was a third part of the night, so I don't know. <laughs> yeah, I don't usually get a zombie out for the last drink of the night. But it was so good. It was so good that we shared that and we were, I mean, you got a drink. Mm -hmm. Was that your only drink? Yeah, I think okay, so. Okay, you got a zombie. I got another drink that I don't know what that was. <laughs> Sorry. I, and then we were like, maybe, can, should we share another zombie? <laughs> we kind of thought about that for a moment. But yeah. We like, yeah, maybe not. At that point, I think we both also were like, uh, I think we're both pretty drunk. Uh -huh. Like, we need to <laughs> cut this off if we're going to do anything the next day. Yeah. So we did. We went back to the Fairmont. Oh, and also stay tuned so that we can give you our reviews at the very end. The next day, the whole plan. I had a hard time waking up, first of all. You did. Was to go to Trader Vic's. We did a bunch of San Francisco stuff. We went to, where did we go? Oh, Fisherman's Wharf. And yeah, we saw the Golden Gate Bridge. Golden Gate Bridge. Take my photos, which made me very happy. Yeah. We did a bunch of tourist stuff uh -huh. uh, as we are tourists. And then we went over to Trader Vic's. Mm -hmm. And I was very excited to do that with her because I have never been to the Trader Vic's in Emeryville. And I was like, Wait, do I get to go to a tiki bar restaurant that you've never been before? Yeah. That's exciting. And which was also the same for the zombie village. Oh yeah. Yeah. But Trader Vic's is very special because you know how many cocktails we've done on this show from Trader Vic's. Mm -hmm. So the only other Trader Vic's that I had ever been to were the ones in Beverly Hills mm -hmm. and in London. And both of those were striking. London was better than the one in Beverly Hills, but the one in Beverly Hills was just legendary for all the celebrities and everything. And then the Hula Girls actually performed on the pool deck at the Beverly Hills Hotel when there was a Trader Vic's kind of by the pool. Oh, it was wow. a very weak version of Trader Vic's, but the old Asian dudes that were original bartenders at Trader Vic's that's, were still there. Wow, that's yeah. awesome. How many others did they have? How many others, what, in the whole world? Yeah, Trader Vic's. Now? No, how many others were there back then? Or Oh, or? I don't know, 30, 40? Wow. Yeah, like a lot. Now the only ones that are left are Dubai, Munich, Germany, Emeryville. And just a few others. Yeah, a few others. The San Jose airport has one now. You enter through a line of Leroy Schmaltz car, like tiki posts, open two big glass doors that have the Trader Vic's emblem etched into them. There's more carvings and tapa cloth and bamboo in those places. That I've ever seen for sure. Like the best, one of the best tiki experiences that you can imagine, right? Yeah, it was amazing. Uh, what did you have to drink? I saw that they had a purple fish mug on the menu. Okay, what <laughs> like, kind of fish? Puffer fish. Oh, okay. <laughs> so I was like, that, that's what I want. Yeah, so she got the puffer fish drink. Uh-huh, which it was a pineapple kind of drink. Mm -hmm. It was good. It wasn't exceptional, but I think I made a good choice just because of the Puffer fish mug. So I don't regret that. I had to get the 1944 Trader Vic's Mai Tai, the original Mai Tai. And she's like, why are you going to get a Mai Tai? Like, you can get Mai Tais anywhere. No, I was like, you should try something different maybe, but... Mm -hmm. But I had to taste the Mai Tai because that's like, that's the barometer for the rest of the night. It's like, did they get their own Mai Tai correct? Mm -hmm. Dude, they knocked it out of it the park. It was perfect. It was, it was really so good. good. Yeah, so good. Mm -hmm. After that, what do we have? Potted parrot? I, I only had that drink. Mm. It was the same thing. I knew that we were going to other bars and I didn't want to get right. super drunk. <laughs> so did, I, well, did I have something else? You had the potted parrot. Yeah, I had the potted parrot because I knew it came with this bird thing. The drink's great. It's such a great drink. But uh, I don't know what happened to their parrots. They used to be like these really attractive little birds 
And now they're like these weird rubber, creepy dudes. It's heavy. <laughs> it's heavy, yeah. I think it's a very flamboyant parrot. We got the poo-poo platter, which comes with fire under it, like heating the whole thing up. Uh-huh. Everything was great like on that. Shrimp and... Crab Rangoon. That was my favorite. Ribs. Ribs. Nothing made pork, something. Oh yeah, like some little pieces of pork. Mm -hmm. But the ribs, of course, were cooked in the big Chinese ovens. Mm -hmm. Like, oh man, just like 1965 when that place was built there in Emeryville. And then after that, we got beef skewers, which were really fun because you also get to cook your own. Yeah, more <laughs> fire with the beef skewers, and uh -huh. the beef skewers were so good. Yeah, they were pretty really good. And then we also got more crab rangoon, right? Uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> so we only had a couple of drinks there, right? Yeah. I would say the only complaint is that the service was a little slow. It was tough to get drinks and yeah. it wasn't, I mean, it was busy for sure, mm -hmm. but the wait staff was great. And the yeah. decor just is shocking. That was the only thing because the decor was perfect. When we walked in, they were playing Martin Denny. Um, Enchanted Sea. Enchanted Sea. So yeah. I got like, oh. <laughs> Tiki is best when everything is just perfect. The music, the food, the drinks. Yeah, because it's, it's an immersive experience, so you have to go all the way. I know, and when one of those things, oh, and the decor, of course, and when one of those things is off kilter, mm -hmm. then you just go, dude, what are you doing? Yeah, Don't I even do the theme then. I think the only thing that we were actually a little bummed about was that they have maybe four or five TVs played sports. Yeah. So you're like, yeah, maybe, you know, that's, that's that sucks <laughs> but we get it mm -hmm. you know as a business owner maybe you have to like are you just gonna not have anyone on super bowl yeah day, that's you know? true they had three giant tvs in there but they also had some really super vintage like decor in there stuff that you wouldn't normally think of mm -hmm. as tiki bar decor like a walrus skull two of I've them never seen that. and the sawfish the bill of the sawfish <laughs> And then big Chinese rice Bells. things hanging from the ceiling. Uh -huh, and the spears above the bar. Yeah, a lot of very vintage Trader Vic's mm -hmm. decor. And it was that kind of place that every little corner that you look at has something for you yeah. to notice. They had Chinese jade tiles. They had mm -hmm. the wrought iron tiles, which I've never seen before. I, I saw them in a photo and I was like, what are those? And I finally got to feel one. It's like wrought iron divider tiles, kind of. Mm -hmm. And now I want some of those. I love those. But you could see Leroy Schmaltz all over the whole place. All these massive tiki's that looked like they were carved from Oceanic Arts. If not Leroy, then Leroy and some of the other guys that worked at Oceanic Arts. A lot of tiki's with wieners. Also, the place was packed. There were so many people in there. Yeah. And we were also noticing that nobody in that place was like drinking water or Coke or whatever. Mm -hmm. Every single person was enjoying a different cocktail, drinking out of a tiki mug. But we saw people drinking out of your mint pot. Oh yeah. On every show we have like- the, Oh, it's right there. Yeah. Get it. Oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you see me use this as the mint holder uh -huh. for all those shows. And we saw people like just- I know, and I was like, what are you doing? That's the mint holder. Uh, yeah. But I did buy it from Trader Vic's Emeryville in like mm -hmm. 2016. Oh. And it turns out that one of the employees of Trader Vic's actually sculpted this thing. Oh, wow. Yeah, it's meant to be a drink thing, mm -hmm. but and it's supposed to be actually like a drum, mm. but it's always been like a mint holder on the show. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so after that, we went to Smuggler's, Smuggler's Cove, Cove, right? We rode in a Tesla. <laughs> we were like, how fast can we go? Yeah, shockingly fast cars. <gasps> So we went back to Smuggler's Cove and I showed her from the outside that you can't tell that it's Smuggler's Cove uh -huh. aside from the port and starboard lights. Yeah, our driver was like, yeah, this is it, you guys, bye. And I was like, wait, what? Where are we going? I know, where are we going? The only way you can tell that it's a bar is that there's like a small line out in front. Well, by the end of the night, it was a huge line. Yeah. I've been to Smuggler's Cove twice before and of course the reputation and uh, the fact that my buddy Martin owns the place always makes it a special trip. I would say that when we first got there, probably didn't feel that comfortable, right? No, because all of the stools and chairs were taken. We couldn't sit anywhere. We couldn't really, they didn't have any menus that we could look to. Right, you have to use the QR code thing yeah. still, probably because of COVID or whatever. And So we got there when we were a little lost. We didn't, we didn't know where to go. And They told us to get drinks at the top bar, like the, the main bar. Mm -hmm. So once we placed our orders, we finally found a spot on the wall and kind of stood there for a while until our drinks were ready. Mm -hmm. Once we tasted our drinks, it was like, oh yeah, 
And now I remember, and I get it. Mm. So I had a rum barrel. What did you have? I had a three dots and a dash, and that was the best cocktail that I've had in a while. I have never really liked a three dots and a dash. It was and so good. I tasted hers, and it was phenomenal. I particularly like tiki drinks. They can taste the spices, the old spice, mm -hmm. and the, you know. Yep. I like that flavor, and that was... And the Martinique rum and all that, yeah. Incredible cocktail. And also you got three cherries, which is also always worth it. Especially the fancy Luxardo ones. <laughs> and then eventually people left and they said, you want our seats? And, and then once you're sitting at the bar. It's a different experience. It's yeah. a different experience, yeah. It's so much more... Um, intimate. More what? Oh, intimate. Inti inti intimate? Intimate. <laughs> yes. And uh, you feel like you're kind of part of the thing then, you know? Yeah. Otherwise, it's like, it's it's weird because it, it's almost like a loud, like, young bar crowd. The crowd was very unique. Every mm -hmm. little group that you saw was different from the other. Mm -hmm. So there were some loud girls. <laughs> there were some loud girls. Some guys, like, you could you could tell that the guys were, like, looking for chicks and <laughs> just... just just a weird crowd. Yeah. Everybody so, was really into the drinks and the whole atmosphere. Mm -hmm. So people were taking photos. Mm -hmm. So it was the kind of place that you can tell that people are very happy to be there. There was a lot of stuff that seemed new on the walls of uh, Smuggler's Cove that I thought, wow, I guess Martin Kate beat me out in a lot of the auction at Oceanic Arts because it seemed like a lot of the Oceanic Arts decor ended up at Smuggler's Cove. Because it used to be very nautical centric, and I've seen more and more tiki stuff creep in there. So I know that Martin, Martin came up in the tiki scene just like a lot of um, kind of my age did. I remember when he first dropped his job in IT and got a job as a bartender at Trader Vic's because he loved the idea of that so much. Mm -hmm. And then he became this giant deal. So something that really grabbed my attention was that I think they really used every little pot very well. Like, mm -hmm. You could have an empty wall above the door, but like oh, they right. chose to put something in there, so. Yeah, yeah, totally. It's a great use of space. All kinds of like rum barrels and, and like rum yeah. bottles. Mm -hmm. and, and the gigantic anchor. The gigantic anchor made by our buddy Notch. And she's like, what is that anchor? How'd they get it in here? I was like, it's wood. She's like, what? They don't make anchors out of wood. They do in that bar. Does that work? <laughs> <laughs> and then downstairs is kind of a whole different thing. It's like more of um, a ship's hull or like a storage kind of storage area, mm -hmm. but it's still, it's a working bar and uh, it was packed. It was packed. I would say that if you're gonna go to Smuggler's Cove, try to stay in the upstairs bar and uh, try to sit at the bar. It'll really change your whole experience. And get a three dots and a dash. Ooh. <laughs> but it's the same way at like the Blind Rabbit and any kind of very uh, craft cocktail uh -huh. kind of experience. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so based on what we discussed, what was the best drink in your opinion? Smuggler's Cove. Smuggler's Cove. Yeah, I. there's no beating Smuggler's Cove. Mm -hmm. I would say that Zombie at Zombie Village was a close second. Very, very good. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And the drinks at Pagan Island were great. Of course, the drinks at Trader Vic's were incredible, but... All of the drinks except for the Tonga Room, sorry, were really, really, really good. But the, that three dots and a dash that I got was like, that. that's a winner. Okay, so we're gonna say that Smuggler's Cove had the best drinks. And I also want to say that there are tiki bars that we didn't get a chance to go to. Last Rites is, I think it's more of an adventure bar, but it's mm -hmm. based on the whole tiki cocktail thing. Uh, there are several other bars like Forbidden Island that's in Alameda. There's a bunch of tiki bars that are vintage bars that kind of maybe we'll get to go see next time, like Trader Sam, which is the oldest tiki bar in the country in San Francisco. Trader Sam? Yeah. Trader Sam, not Trader Sam's. No, no, it's T A R T A D apostrophe R, trader. See, that's all very confusing. It's very confusing. So there are places that we didn't go to. The bamboo, the bamboo room. I think the Hula Girls played years and years ago, like maybe ten years ago, and uh, they have a mask in there from a San Diego tiki bar, but it's kind of more of a dive bar now. It's all it's a bird. It's also in a very kind of sketchy area, kind of where all the strip clubs are. I think. Bye. 
So this is not an exhaustive list of all of the tiki bars mm -hmm. in San Francisco. But these are the ones we went to. <laughs> it's a list of all the tiki bars that we got to go in two nights. So. Yeah, in two nights. Yeah. <laughs> That's already a lot. Totally. So the next criteria was best decor. Which place do you think had the best decor out of all of them? Zombie Village, Pagan Idol, Tonga the Tonga Room, Room Trader Vic's. I think it's I already said. Favorite decor. I I have to pick two. A two? Yeah. Wait, I just changed my mind. I think favorite decor, I have to say, it was probably the Tonga Room. Because it, it's the kind of place that you can't duplicate. You, you just can't. It's so expansive. It's it's very unique. It, yeah, it really is. Uh, I God, is that my favorite for best decor? I was thinking either Tonga Room or Tiber Vets, but yeah, for I think for us, Vintage always wins. The other bars look incredible, mm -hmm. but you're never gonna get well now, especially you're never gonna get Leroy Schmaltz to carve you gigantic, you know, ten foot tall mm -hmm. Marques and Tiki's again. Trader Vic's had more tiki's in their building than any other place. Mm -hmm. and the Tonga Room is gorgeous. God, I think I would have to say Tonga Room also then. Yeah, oh no, I can't. <laughs> Tonga Room and Trader Vic's were the yeah, best decor. Uh -huh. Okay, because like I, I really, really loved all of the other places' decors. It was everything was perfect. Everything was yeah. amazing. But when you think about it, all of the three other bars that we went to, they're kind of similar. They're kind of the same vibe, yeah. You know? And the Tonga Room is something that you can't compare to anything else. With the and pool, Trader Vic's also is something that you can't yeah, compare. Yeah, totally. So. But with the pool, the yeah. pool and the rain, man, mm -hmm. <laughs> that's, that's a whole difference. Man. <laughs> so for the best overall experience, what would you say was your best overall experience at, the, at a tiki bar? I don't know if I have an answer for that. Well, honestly, you, let's, let's talk it through here. The Tonga Room was amazing, but we had many things that we didn't like about it. The music was just... It was obnoxious and horrible. And I remember like almost 20 years ago when I went there on a date with somebody else, sorry. What, 20 years ago? <laughs> I was only nine. Oh my <laughs> God. <laughs> I remember there being a thing in the middle of the table that said there's a $20 surcharge for the band. <laughs> $20. Yeah. The band started playing just as we were getting up. Mm -hmm. So there was like one song that we heard and immediately I was like, we got to get the f We got to get out of here. Mm -hmm. And they put that charge on our tab and I called the manager over because I was like, I'm not paying $20 for one song from that kind of music mm -hmm. or one song from anybody mm -hmm. after after spending a fortune on some kind of big lobster dinner. You didn't get me any lobster. They didn't have it on the menu anymore. Yeah. Sorry. Best overall experience. I don't know if I can answer that. You have to answer that. That's the show. That's why people are watching. Maybe the most fun that I had zombie was village. a zombie village. Because we really <laughs> enjoy that. It was a zombie village, we, yeah. We had a lot of fun. We had a lot of fun. Yeah. yeah. Was that the best tiki experience that you had the whole time, though? Taking into consideration music, decor, cocktails. Music was perfect. The court was amazing. Cocktails were amazing. Zombie Village. If you go to San Francisco, don't miss Zombie Village. But also go to all of them. Mm-hmm. Because every single one of them had something that we liked and had something that the other place didn't have. So yeah. it's worth it. Go take your bar hop in San Francisco. We should do it again. Yeah. Next There's... weekend? I can't afford next weekend. <laughs> there are plenty of bars that we didn't go to. Uh-huh. There are plenty of experiences that we didn't have. We didn't go to Alcatraz. <laughs> we didn't go to Alcatraz. I don't think they have a tiki bar there, though. They should. <laughs> All right. Aloha, baby. Aloha, baby. <laughs> <laughs>
So this is not an exact. Is that a fire truck? Spark is gonna start. To go. Stay tuned to find out which. <laughs> Stay tuned to find out which San Francisco. <laughs> Shit! Here we go. San Francisco. <laughs> <laughs> break my chick's ear off. Super expensive mug. Did we get everything? Yeah, they do carry now. Mmm. Mm. Yeah. Did you enjoy riding the cable car? Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. We got to ride the cable car like hanging from the outside. Mm-hmm. That was the first seat, actually. Totally. Mm -hmm. It was fun. And seeing the Golden Gate Bridge was also really mm. nice for me. What about the my hills? Bucket list. The hills. A lot of hills in San Francisco, especially when you're staying at a place on top of Knob Hill. <laughs> yeah, that was the most amount of exercise that I had in like three yeah. years. I was like thankful for it because I was like, <laughs> at least this is making me get some exercise. <laughs> and then we got home and <laughs> we deserve in and out burgers now because yeah. we exercised so much. Yeah, we undid all of the exercising uh -huh. in one meal. Mm -hmm. It was worth it.